Okay, so let's practice here with some discrete random variables and apply these ideas. So remember we said PMFs could come in in all shapes or forms, tables, formulas, graphs. Um, sometimes, sometimes we're given in the problem just a table of the PMFs. Sometimes we're given information and we have to come up with the PMF ourselves. Okay, so say we're again manufacturing some kind of item and we want to know how many items do we have to go through to to find a flaw okay so let's just say that the probability that we see a flaw is about 0.1 or 10 percent and we can assume independence so we want to look at this probability distribution okay okay so let's define some things here let's let f be the probability of having a flaw so then the probability of not having a flaw, just call it n or we could call it not f, is, is 0.9 alright, so remember we're trying to figure out how many items do I have to look at to find a flaw okay, so I could either find a flaw the first time around or I could have to look at two items, or three items, four items or so on, right, we don't really have again an upper bound here Okay, so it's going to be hard to fit something in a table where we don't have an upper bound and assign each one of these a probability. So I think it might be best to use a formula to describe this PMF. Okay, so our, think about what our sample space is. Again, we have a countable but infinite sample space. All right, so what if I think about, so the probability of this happening. The first one I get is a flaw. Well, that's easy. That's just 0.1. So 10% of the time, I just got to look at one thing and, I, and I'll find it. Okay, what about the second time around? Well, if they're independent, I should be able to use my independent multiplication rule and say, okay, for no flaw, that's 0.9 times having a flaw the second time, that's 0.1. Right, so maybe you can see kind of a pattern developing there. Right? So we could define our formula like this. 0 0.9, 0 0.9 was our probability of not having a flaw, times x minus 1, right? because I would have to pull that many items before my x item actually does have a flaw. And that's 0.1. Alright, so that's an example of thinking about a situation, coming up with a PMF on my own, and I express my PMF as a formula here because we had a potentially infinite amount of values. Right now, if you could picture this though, as this probability keeps going, it it's getting smaller and smaller, and it'll eventually get so small that it's that it's negligible. Right? But technically this could go on forever and ever and ever. So let's look at another example here. And we've thought about this situation before say you're having three children and we want to we're calling our random variable the number of boys okay so maybe you could picture this sample space in your head right the obvious ones are three girls three boys but then the question is something like this is this different so boy boy girl is that different from boy girl boy and yes, something like this, these are two distinct outcomes. Okay, so how many total distinct outcomes are there? Maybe you could visualize this in your head. Or, remember there's a nice little formula that we can use. We can say, okay, well, two possibilities, boy or girl, three kids. That means there are eight total possibilities. All right, but we notice out of all of these outcomes, so kind of like over here when we were deciding is, is this different from this? Well, yes, they're distinct outcomes, but remember a random variable is the number of boys. Right? So even though these are distinct outcomes, there's two still two boys in that family. Alright, so we need to group by number of boys, and then we can build our PDF our PMF based on this distribution, based on visualizing our sample space here. All right, then just to check and make sure we did everything right, and this is a valid probability distribution, right? everything needs to be between 0 and 1, and they need to sum up to 1. 
All right, so it's a little simpler to define our sample space like this than it was with the formula, right? But that was because we have a finite sample space. One of them results in zero boys, one out of the eight. Three out of the eight results in one boy, and so forth. All right, so notice I use the notation here, little f of x, all right? Because I think that goes along nicely when we're also looking at capital F of X or the CDF. Okay, so how did we find our CDF from here? All right, well, our CDF and our PMF will always look the same for the first value of X, right? Because there's nothing to accumulate. Okay, but so how did we get to this 4 eighths? Well, that was 1 eighth plus 3 eighths. How did we get to 7 eighths? 1 eighth plus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths. There it gives me 7 eighths. Add them all together, I get one. All right, so that's where my CDF comes from. Now, if you were just given that PMF, you should be able to create the CDF from that, and you ought to be able to go the other way too. So, pretty easy, right? But what what can I do with all this? Well, the kind of questions we could ask at this point are things like this. So using my PMF and my CDF, what's the probability they have, say, at least two boys? So I think the only tricky part with questions like this is just, just being careful and, and kind of parsing, well, well, what does that mean at least in probability notation? All right? well, at least means greater than or equal to two. Okay, so greater than or equal to two, that means, in this case, two and three. So I can take my PMF value, 2 plus 3, 3 eighths plus 1 eighth, or 4 eighths, 1 half. Okay, I could also do something like this, fewer than 3 boys. Well, fewer than 3, that's, that's easy, that's just less than 3. Okay, but notice, it is less than 3, right? That's 0, 1, and 2, does not include 3. Okay, if it had said less than or equal to 3, I could have just gone to my CDF value for 3. That would have been easy. But it says less than. So less than 3 is equivalent to less than or equal to 2 when we're thinking about trying to use our CDF. Okay, so when something's discrete, less than some number is equivalent to less than or equal to the, the value below it. Now maybe you're seeing, you're remembering some of our basic probability rules and you see a little bit easier way to do this. Okay, so less than three means these value, values, right? Zero, one, and two. So you could take those and add them all up and that's, that's fine, that's a valid way to do it. It's not the end of the world here. But maybe you were thinking, well, could I just say one minus the probability at three? And yes you were using the complement rule there. Okay, so we see here that this only has three, four total outcomes, so it's not the end of the world if you didn't recognize the complement rule there. But what if you had had 100 outcomes, right? It'd be much, much easier to just say one minus a single outcome than add up 99 other ones. Okay, so the complement rule is here to make our lives easier. So those are just some basic basic problems dealing with PMF, CDFs, finding some some basic probabilities. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.